this NVIDIA graphics card is going to absolutely change everything. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. Alright, so let's first go ahead and talk about that next generation NVIDIA graphics card. Now this information does come from the well-known leaker Comp87 Kimi, and it all started with the post that he put over on Twitter on May 11th, where he just simply stated 2 times 8 times 3 times 3 times 2. Now, you know, at face value, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, and you might be scratching your head and going, you know, what exactly is he talking about here? However, if you go through the comments and look at some past stuff that he's been leaking, we kind of get the idea that he is actually talking about uh, the GH100 or potential even the GH102 which would be the hopper architecture and could be referring to the RTX 5090 or potentially 5080 Ti or potentially even some sort of data center GPU based on the hopper architecture so you know actually if we go ahead and we take these numbers and we do the math we can see that it comes to 144 stream processors if you do 8 times 3 times 3 times 2 uh, which funny enough is actually the same amount that you see him leaking in the upcoming Lovelace architecture which is actually starting to make a whole lot of sense here and so then if we take the times 2 what he's probably referring to here is that we're going to be seeing a multi-chip module design coming out of NVIDIA with the RTX 5090 or at least hopefully with the GeForce RTX 5090 because if they don't get the MCM design out they're definitely going to be in some serious trouble as AMD is clearly moving to get that MCM design into their upcoming Radeon RX 7000 series GPUs which is definitely going to be a huge pain point for NVIDIA who is not going to have their MCM design ready for their Lovelace architecture which of course is going to be a their RTX 4000 series GPUs. So yeah, this is going to be a little bit of a ways away out here. And so I'm guessing a lot of you are going to be wondering why I'm talking about the RTX 5000 series GPUs when we're going to be so far away from the release. However, I think this is going to be a huge deal and could absolutely change the way graphics are done going forward. And that's why I want to talk about it. Because if we go ahead and we take a look at the leaks of the RX 7000 series GPU, you can see that there's actually going to be a huge, massive increase in terms of performance, at least according to leaks coming out of Red Gaming Tech and others, we're probably going to be looking at over 2.5 times the amount of performance, or at least that's the current leaks, uh, whether or not AMD is going to actually be able to achieve over 2.5 times the amount of performance, especially in games where latency is going to be a huge issue. You know, that's something that we're just going to have to wait and see if that actually does occur. But either way, it looks like there's going to be an absolutely massive improvement going from the traditional monolithic GPU to the MCM design. And so I would assume that NVIDIA is also going to be seeing a similar massive increase in terms of the amount of performance that they can squeeze out of this graphics card if they do end up going with that MCM design for the RTX 5090. And in fact, if we go ahead and take a look at another post that Cop87 Kimi put under the original post, we can see that he actually says uh, that the performance of GH100 could equal three times GA100. So yeah, we could be looking at a scenario here where the RTX 5090 could be three times as fast as the RTX 3090. So that's definitely going to be a huge improvement. And of course, the Lovelace GPUs that are going to be coming out uh, sometime in 2020 22 are going to have a huge improvement as well. I'm expecting to see at least 50% more performance, and in fact, some people are expecting to see double the amount of performance out of the Lovelace architecture when compared to the uh, Ampere architecture, so the RTX 4090 could potentially be up to maybe even two times as fast as the RTX 3090. However, the RTX 5090 is looking to be even more impressive as if Cop87 Kimi is correct, and it does end up being three times as fast as the 3090, the RTX 5090 is going to be absolutely perfect for this 4K 100 44 hertz displays and it's going to be one of the biggest jumps in terms of performance that we have ever seen. Now the second thing I want to talk about is that AMD is apparently going to be releasing a massive GPU at the end of this year and now this information comes from the website videocards.com and I'm going to go ahead and read uh, a statement that came from Lisa Su and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. So according to Lisa Su quote last year we talked about our first generation cDNA architecture. This year as I said we're putting together our next generation cDNA architecture. This is actually a key component that enables us to win in the largest supercomputer bids in the U.S. around Frontier Oak Ridge National Labs installment as well as the Lawrence Livermore National Labs installment with El Capitan and many others. But it's a coherent interconnect between CPUs and GPUs that allows us to fully optimize for HPC and for AI and machine learning applications. And we will be launching the next generation of that architecture actually later this year. We're very excited about it. I think it's progressed extremely well. It's the next big step in sort of innovation around the data center architectures. Now what they're talking 
about here is the cDNA2 architecture, and of course this is not going to be making its way into gaming GPUs, but in a fashion it kind of will be, because according to previous leaks and rumors that have been going around, the cDNA2 architecture should be the first GPU that comes out that's actually a multi-chip module design, so this could be the first stepping stone for AMD to introduce its multi-chip module designs to the market, and so, you know, with this releasing later this year, I would expect this to uh, shortly after be followed by the actual RX 7000 series GPUs, which should also be a multi-chip module design, and so it'll be very interesting to see just how powerful these cDNA2 uh, GPUs are. Now, of course, they're meant for the data center, so you're probably not going to be seeing any gaming performance, but it will give us an idea of just how scalable this architecture is going to be. And then finally, the reveal event for the RTX 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti was just posted online in the form of a teaser from NVIDIA, and if we go ahead and look at this video, we can see that uh, according to the video that was posted, it says that on May 31st at 10 p.m. PDT, uh, they are going to be having a reveal event for these GPUs, or what appears to be a reveal event for these GPUs, as they don't necessarily explicitly state it. Uh, however, I think we all know that that's going to be the case. So if you want to go ahead and make sure that you're up to date on all these reveal events and everything, and you want to go ahead and be part of the live stream that I'll be doing, make sure that you subscribe, because I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and it'll definitely be interesting to see exactly what the final specs, as well as the uh, actual release date and the uh, price, most importantly, of the RTX 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti are going to be, as well as what steps NVIDIA is going to be taking to try and get it into the hands of gamers. But hey, that's just what I think. How fast do you think the RTX 5090 is going to be? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.